My name is Kwajo Opoku Mahala Jr. and I'm a professional soccer player. Play for LFC and I'm from Ghana. And I started playing soccer when I was um, 12. That's how I know like I'm taking the soccer serious. But and yeah, that's me. Uh, my dad was a soccer player too, but he didn't get the chance to be a professional player, you know. But for me, I wanted to play soccer. Like it's my goal, it's my dream. Like I love the game, so so I chase my dream, you know. And uh, by the grace of God, here I am. <laughs> it was amazing feeling because it's a dream come true. It's, you know, every every footballer dream is to be playing as a professional. And uh, I got a chance to be in LFC. It was so amazing. <laughs> Even though I make fun of him all the time, <laughs> if I, I, when reflecting back, I would say that he was very grateful to be part of the team. Uh, he was introduced right before COVID hit, right? You know, yeah. like that's when you started training. And then COVID hit, we were playing Champions League. We get shut down. Everyone's stuck at home. Um, and we were we sent programs out to our players and we had to work with them remotely and not a full-fledged he was a trialist at the time with lafc but he was doing everything that we had asked him um he was like i said he was really grateful to be there and even when we came back like we went to the bubble in orlando we yeah. were still training at our facility and we got back and then you were still training with the team training hard he was like the friendliest guy amongst the whole team. And then when he actually signed, everyone was so happy for you. So yeah. I think that's one of my first experiences with Mahala, besides him forgetting my name. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> 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 <Mr. JC. laughs> yeah, like uh, most of the time I call you Jay, because, uh, you know, Mr. Yeah, Jay. Yeah. Right? So, so then I'll be like, Ah, I forgot your name again. Yeah. <laughs> I was working with Carlos Vela, and then Mahala wanted something. And then I go, what's my name first? And he goes, oh. I'm like, I go, Carlos, he's asking for something, he doesn't know my name. And yeah. so I made him come back next time, and he has to remember it, and then just go, yeah. Back. Couple of times. Yeah. He was nervous. Yeah. Well, it was amazing, like, Okay, I didn't play a lot of time, but I get like seven minutes. It was so good, like the fans, like the atmosphere is like, it's amazing, you know, like, and it was a dream come true, you know, to, to make your dad for the team, you know, so it was so good. That was the end of the, the first COVID year, yeah. right? And then I, one of his star moments, Champions League, your goal in yeah. Champions League. Yeah. Like, <laughs> can you talk a little bit about, because he scored towards the end of the match. Yeah. That's what helped us win who? Cruz Azul. Uh, yeah, so um, I went inside second half mm -hmm. and uh, it was 1-1. One, 1-1, one. Yeah. One, one, so we were just doing, no, it was 0-0. Zero, zero. So it was 0-0, zero, zero. so I went inside when it was 0-0. Zero, zero. So we scored and they equalized. So uh -huh. it was 1-1 one, one. and um, corner corner kick it's like 79 or 78 yeah. minutes and uh they flicked the ball i was uh, at the edge of the box so i'm just waiting and the ball bounced and bob our former coach he's the one who scouted me so he shouted at the bench like mahala, mahala. oh man <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know what's going to happen just smash it to the net oh yeah. i don't know where to run to like when the, i scored i go i don't know where to go whether to go to the coach or go to the place i just you run, run. You <laughs> run to the random corner <laughs> no and nobody was there so <laughs> i just turned around like oh. but I, I think that was a big moment like yeah. everyone was so happy for yeah him. and then some of the stuff that we talked about afterwards was like you broke down when you went in we went back to we went back to the hotel he broke yeah. down because it's a moment it's a champions league it's yeah. a semi-final yeah right? um so like such a big moment for a young kid and i i remember the entire team was so happy for him. yeah even the, the ball 
everybody signed the ball and yeah. they just gave it to me. I have it in my house. So. And then how many extra Instagram followers did you uh, get? Uh, more than a lot of K's. Like, <laughs> like I, thousands. I, 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 was, I was like, first I was 6,000. I have 6,000 followers. And the when I scored that goal, I was like, I was 10, 11 K or something. 10, 11 K, bro. Come on. I was like, come on. That's what happened with this guy. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so at the end of that first COVID year, you know, he was like an up and coming guy. You know, he was doing well. So, and then come the next year. Yeah, um, yes, it's difficult being away from the farm, you know. Sometimes you miss your farm, you know. But what I, to me, now I like, I have family here, you know, like, I have family who loves me the way my families love me, you know. So that one is helping me to, you know, to be, to be here. Have my sensei, <laughs> Mr. Jason, like, and um, like the team, like the team, and uh, I have a lot of uh, people who been taking care of me, you know, like Mr. Paul and a lot of people. I can't mention their, all their names, you know, so, yeah. <sighs> it was so hard, like when I first got my injury. So the thing is, I asked Mr. Jason, like, they said like, I need to do surgery, you know, like stuff. So because I don't know, I haven't done surgery before and stuff. And he told me like, yeah, um, it's good for me because I'm young and uh, it's not like the world is at end, you know, like the world is end. Because I was afraid because I can't play football anymore, like, you know, because I love the game, you know. So he told me like, never to worry, just I should do the surgery, you're going to take care of me and stuff. And when I did the surgery, by the grace of God, he was there and he gave me sometimes like sometimes I'm, I, I'll be honest with you. Sometimes I'll be like down, like oh man, see my players, they are playing, you know. And then I'll be like sad, you know, like. And you told me like, don't worry, just do the rehabs and the exercises. You get better soon. And oh man, I can tell you, <laughs> I, I started running so soon. <laughs> yeah, so it was tough and it was good. So it has helped me grow, you know, yeah. Well, I, I think <laughs> that at the beginning of that 2021 season, yeah. again, like 2020 ended on a really good note for him with Champions League. And he started off strong, had a really good preseason. You were playing preseason yeah. games um, to get more minutes. He would play some, some minutes with the first team, but to get him more minutes, he, we had him with the second team too, just to get more minutes, more playing time. Uh, and unfortunately, that's where you got hurt. Yeah. And again, a, a part of it is you have to, working with players or working with anyone, number one is kind of empathizing of where they are coming from. You know, everyone has their unique situation. Everyone has their unique story. And for him who hadn't, had never really been hurt to be put in a situation where it wasn't clear cut, you know, like we had to decide collectively with Mahala, with his agent, with our doctors, what was the best course of action to moving forward, not only for his condition, but for his overall career. So yeah, like it was a difficult time after he got hurt because we could have gone different ways. But at the end of the day, when we were talking, it was really about what was best for him. Mahala and his future and like any professional footballer they want to do well they want to move to another level they want to play in Europe or wherever they want to do so it's not just about right now it's about where they want to be when we help make a decision and make a plan um, and it's the same thing if you were to come into like here at HealthFit it's the same thing it's getting to know exactly who the person is, where they want to go, and then working together on what is the best plan for, for him. And um, they were tough conversations. And I, I think part of my job is to be there for him. 
and it's yeah we do exercises yeah we do like like, like killing yeah. your legs and stuff like yeah. that but a lot of while we're doing that is is talking right and we and yeah we, and like he said it was tough you were rehab for six before six seven months before yeah. you were like on the field yeah so it's laying down the expectations in the beginning right we said okay this is going to be a long process not knowing exactly how anything ever is going to go i'm not i'm not a I'm not a magician but in general it's like okay it's going to look like this that way he has he has a long-term goal of getting back to football but he has to have the short-term goals of okay in at the end of this week what do i want to accomplish at the end of this month what do i want to accomplish because any athlete, any person needs to have something to look forward to. And that is part of the challenge of a long-term rehab or a rehab with anyone. You, you want to have something to look forward to and to keep his eye on the prize because it is tough when his brothers are on the field and let's say he's on the table doing exercises. Yeah. It's, it's tough and it's, no one wants to be in that position. They just look out the window and all their boys are just running around everywhere and he's like I can barely even walk right now so when we talk about like what do we talk about it's trying to read where he's at if he's down how do I lift him back up if he's not working as hard as I think he which I feel he needs then it's like a little kick in the butt to like hey this is what we got to do and reminding him of where, where do we want to go where do we want to be and knowing that we're gonna do this together and you know those were every day was different the banter is different yeah it's 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 fun at the end of the day yeah but there are some tough days some well. tough days yeah but at the end of the day the good the good the good days are the most important you know because yeah. it won't be smooth it'll be upside down you know and i think that's a reminder with it's when we get so stuck sometimes of like, okay, this hurts. This, I'm not able to do this today. What we do as, as medical professionals or whatever it is, and, and as friends, is to like take a step back and yeah. like, look, yes, it's not great today, but if you look back one or two weeks, now you're able to do this versus where you were before. Yeah. And it's, in a lot of ways, to be very objective and to look at the big picture, but all at the same time being human. Because if I'm a robot and I just say, and I just say this is what you have to do, this is what you have to do, it's hard to get someone to do that. It's it's really about building a relationship. I always call he's like my son. I IG you as my son. Yeah. Even though Kevin does it now. Yeah. But I was his original father here. And but, he, I get abducted, so. <laughs> <laughs> it mean a lot to me like and it helped me to even to to stay strong and to be to say like i can do it like i have people who care about me you know and uh um i don't know what we share even like when we we're doing training like we're doing the rehabs it's not about only the training with the rehabs i'm doing like we talk like you know like talking to your friend like hey ha, like it's kind of amazing, you know, like the way he talked to me, the way he he, he gave me like words of encouragement, how he helped me, and so. And now I'm kicking, man. Yeah, it's good. It's good. <laughs> Honestly, no, and it's man, I'm your son. That's true. You're okay, special good. to me. Yeah, but everyone's special to me. You're a little bit more. Yeah. No, uh, yeah, I'll take it. But I think, <laughs> I, I think when when he had a long term when he had a long term rehab, we got to spend a lot of time together. Um, versus like you know like the normal treatments throughout the day, it's like fifteen minutes, fifteen minutes. Yeah. Where me and you, at least during training time, we got to spend an hour or more all the time together. Um, and then here at Health Fit, when I was here before treating or like every doctor that's here now we have the time we spend an hour with 30 minutes to an hour with everyone and part of that is like I said 
each person is, is an individual. We have to learn about each person. There's no such thing as a cookie cutter solution. Like his knee injury, yeah, you can look at a normal protocol and say, these are the things that you do, but it's, it never works that perfectly. You have to be able to, to know the person, know the body, know the history, what are the underlying causes, what got him there in the first place to, to really make an impact, not only get the injury better, but to keep it from coming back. That's always a, a goal of ours. Um, whether it's with the club or or here at health and like right away even like after his initial surgery yeah there's not much you can do there's a lot of things you can do for the injured part but right away I was kicking your butt with everything yeah, else started to walk like couple weeks I started to walk couple weeks yeah <laughs> <laughs> it was so fun, oh yeah, like, I remember when I was working on the machine, but, uh, you know, in this case, you can't uh, bend your knee like that, so I was working and I was trying new things, like, I was trying, and I, I was, jeez, I, I was like, Mr. Jason, like, my, my knee hurts, like, you know, like, it was like, what do you do, and I was like, I, I was, I was just walking, but I didn't tell him like I was trying to do a different thing, you know. And um, it's like okay, just stay like relax, like you're not going to work again. You know, so the next day then I'll start to work. Please don't don't punish me with that. No, I didn't tell him, so it's good. Thank you. <laughs> so like and uh, the couple uh, the next day I started to work like the what he told me to do and man, it was good. Just walking because like when I started get hurt, I wanted to like get back fast, like you know, you know, because I said, oh, I want to play football, you know. But if I do that, I almost, I always hurt myself more than that, you know. And uh, listening to his advice and uh, the training program he gave me, man, now my knee is so strong, you know. Yeah, he has muscles now. He was skinny before. Yes, I was so skinny. <laughs> <laughs> but I think part of it is, with any good rehab, is part of it is yeah, yeah, we have to get his knee to function and all that kind of stuff. But part of it is the men the the mental part of like the fear, yeah. right? Like doing something for the first time. It's like something we always hear. Like anyone here is that I feel like I have to learn how to walk again. I feel like I have to learn. And that's exactly what happens because whenever something someone gets hurt, all of all of those senses kind of go. They don't go away, but they're like muted because whether it was the pain, whether it was the swelling, whether you have a new ligament in you or whatever it is, but you really need someone that you can trust to kind of to do it because you're yeah. like, are you sure? And then. And it's my job or my duty to be like, to be safe, but to still like push you a little bit. It's okay. Yeah. What, like I'm, I'm not trying to, I mean, I'm not making you sprint right now, but I'm asking you to do this where I feel you're going to be safe to do so. So I think that is good rehab. I, it's, it's where you can build this partnership to coach them along. And like I said, I, he's like my son, he's like my kid, because my current, my real son and my real daughter. Oh man, I do have a real kids. one? Yeah. Man, I'm not real? You're real, but you're ah, just, okay. you're not really mine. <laughs> <laughs> you can meet them today. You met them already. But, yeah. um, but it's the same thing. You're, you're coaching them to do things that they may not be ready to mentally and in potentially physically so to build that trust you know it's it's I think that is one of the most important parts of any relationship to get them kind of to where they want to be and uh, uh, I think it, uh, it's all about the mindset you know so I think like what you taught me helped me uh, much you know I had to st stay strong in my mind, you know, and uh, the motivation term, mm -hmm. yeah, 
school. Yeah. Team. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> so like uh, the mindset help you, you know, because if you have the mindset like I'm gonna do it, like you can do it. But if you have doubt in your head, like that one, it won't help because I know like when we started, like I have a little doubt in my head, but it didn't help me because when I changed my mindset, I started to you know to get to to get to there. You know, so. I already trust him because like in the training like the way uh, even when I, I have not got hurt the way he treat everybody like you know sometimes you need to go get a massage what, the, what do you use the, that destroy you that stick oh, I don't the, know the scraping yeah uh, yeah so sometimes you know <laughs> I don't like it <laughs> but like, it's painful but I don't know then when you finish you feel like you're good to go, like you can run and fight, you know, so. And um, how I trust him so easy is like, the way he talk to you, you know, the way like, it's not only like the the, the, the training you're gonna tell you, the rehab is gonna tell you, like, you're gonna talk like person, you know? So that one is, you are free with it. If you're talking with somebody every day, like, and he giving you words, man, you be like, ah. You don't have any doubt with the person, you know, like you feel free with him. You know? So, Mr. Jason is amazing, man. And thank you for helping. Yeah, just today. Just today. <laughs> just today. I, I think, I, I think you, if you truly care about someone, they know. If, you, if you're truly invested in someone, they know. And it's to, for me or, or any doctor here at Health is like, this to put your best foot forward and that, hey, I'm in this with you. If if I'm going like half a step in, he's gonna feel it. He's gonna be like, oh, he's just trying to do X, Y, Z. It's like, no, whatever you need, I got you. Within limitations, within, you know, confines. But it's like, okay, what do you need? And I'll show that I'll go above and beyond for you and hopefully you do the same. Besides when you missed the time I picked you up and you didn't miss that. <laughs> Anyways. That time I was tired, man. Yeah, I, tired. I, 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 tired. <laughs> but it's just, it's like, like with any good relationship, <laughs> I know we're talking about rehab and stuff, but they're relationships. Yeah. It's, you know, son or brother or, or friend or whatever it is. And that creates the best environment and gives you the best chance of success. Yeah. I feel like, I think, I think that I think I'm a good therapist. I think I'm good hands-on, I'm good exercise or whatever that is. But that doesn't mean anything unless he trusts me. And and that's something that I hold in high regard, whether it's with me or with Mahala or like anyone here at like Health and the business. I think that's why we do so well with our clients. Well, I feel great, you know, like, like I said, like the injury helped me too. Like, even though like I was when it started, I was a little bit. I was like, oh man, I'm gonna play football again. How long, you know, and stuff. But now, like, I feel so great and I feel grateful because it has helped me to grow, you know, to be to grow as a person, even as a soccer player too. And man. By the grace of God, season is going well. I'm scoring goals. Our team is doing better, so it's it's so good, you know. Like I know how to explain the feeling, you know. <laughs> well, um, one thing is um, I take a lot of from it because, like, right now when I'm going to when we don't train, I just go straight to change, go straight to the gym. He told me like anytime I need to stretch, you know, so it helped me. My muscle will be free, everything will be free, so, and the thing you told me helped me out. You know, now I don't come, I don't come to your table a lot. <laughs> yeah, I but, had to, <laughs> he was on the table a lot because we were rehabbing. <laughs> but now, like, he's, he's pretty independent. <laughs> he does what he's supposed to do most days. Yeah, so. um, and, like, I literally will grab him to make sure he gets maintenance care. And it's funny, like, we, we get him on the table, he's getting care, and everyone's like, 
Why is a 21 year old? 21 year old. Why are you going to tell? <laughs> I go, hey, he's scoring goals. We gotta make sure he's taking care of. You know, like uh, because like when we started doing the rehab, um, it helped me because now every time I'm on time, like, oh, I need to do this. I have to do this. You know, so it has helped me because now I'm doing my own thing. Like, I'm doing exercises, stretching, like foam rolling, like everything. You know, and uh, first. I'll be on his table all the time <laughs> and now I don't go to his table so now once a while then he will call me like oh you go do this and you know so yeah <laughs> yeah but I miss it not missing it when I'm injured you know like missing it when like he just uh sometimes I don't do the foam rolling a lot like you know for my muscles so it'd be like tight so he called me then he would just help me out you know that one, I will feel good, you know. <laughs> I, I I think this, like he said before, like it's ups and downs to, to anything, and then he, he he rehabbed well from his injury in 2021. 2022 was like okay, yeah. this is the year. Yeah. But even in the beginning of the year, even there the was be- little things here and there. Yeah. And really to stay the course. Stay the course, and the questions are okay. If something was bugging him, and is it the injury, or is it is he just trying to is he getting his fitness back? Is he he's adapting to a new stimulus? He's he's training more with the team because that's training with the team is very different from rehab on the yeah. field. It's very very different. It's, it's a lot more dynamic, and for him to trust the process that. As long as he keeps training and as long as we are monitoring the load and any little hiccups here and there, we're able to, to take care of them as soon as possible. And if you look at his minutes from the beginning of the year till now, like they've increased because like his body is learning how to tolerate first team trainings, first team games, starting, starting from 15 minutes to 30 minutes to 60 minutes to full games. It's, it's it's different on your body and for for us to remind him hey you're in you're on the right place but to always be honest with us if there's a situation where hey we need to pull you back a little bit you know? because at the end of the day it's the longevity of him it's not just this one game or this game it's how can he last an entire season how can we win supporter shield how can we win a mess cup Yep. And then maybe we're in check to see next season. Yep. So I think like, those are the long goals. But like he's saying, the consistency of the day to day, he's honed in. And that's something we work on a lot. It's like, are you yeah. doing X? Oh, I forgot. I'm like, dude. <laughs> but now it's like, yeah. I don't worry. I don't have to check. I don't have to look. I know he's doing. When's the last time I asked you, are you doing X, Y, Z? I don't remember. Partially because I don't want to talk to you, <laughs> but I'm doing the right thing. Yes, you are. <laughs> but you know, he's like, he's done really, really well for himself, and me and him have a really good relationship, obviously, and it's because he's, he did what Dad told him to do, and he's successful right now. Yeah, and you know, like we have a great relationship. I remember my first game I played 20 minutes or 25 when I first get back from me. Then, yeah. Yeah. Oh man. You're so happy. I was happy and tired. I was dying. <laughs> 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 yeah, so like I was so happy like I was I was shooting like that game I was shooting I shoot a lot. Yeah, you so, were just trying to score. So, <laughs> you probably shouldn't have shot that much. So my sense, uh, Mr. Jason told me, like, man, you shooting too much, bro. <laughs> so I was like, I was trying to, you know, release the legs and see how it's going. <laughs> that was good, you know. It was good. And from there, step by step, you know, like, you can't just go up straight, you know, a little by little. Every day you take a step. Every day you take a step and you get there. And now... I don't worry about my knee. I'm not afraid of anything. Yeah, so, yeah. I, th- I think the what got me is like when he asked, like after a game, he'll go, 
what did you think? And I'm not a yeah. football guy, <laughs> but he'll ask me. But yeah. I think he knows I'm not a football guy, but he, I think he trusts that I know him. And not only physically, but what he may be thinking mentally. And it's, it's funny, like I'll say certain things to him. I go, well, I think this and that, but and I always say it, but I'm not a football guy. But based on what he tells me, I may grab someone like another player from time to time and I'm like, hey, can you talk to Mahal? Just because he's getting his groove back. He's, he's obviously is a really dynamic player that's overcoming, that was overcoming an injury. And I, as a former athlete myself, it was always, I always did my best when I felt free. And I, I think I can talk to him on that level sometimes. It's just like, when you feel open, when can you pick moments to go and stay back, not yeah. to rush everything, and to, if you compare yourself to whether it's Carlos or Gareth or like other good attackers and then how are they able to do well and not run as much as him not waste his energy so um like i said i think that was a for me like a trust moment that he asks me about football when i'm again I'm not a football guy now i always ask you so and you always answer me sometimes you call for the other time you call me stand or something <laughs> It's like, man, I'm asking you something. I you know, I see you. you know? <laughs> yeah. So, you know. Yeah. No, I think we've built that trust where, like, you ask your dad how I do. Yeah. Yeah. So. This one I'm saying from my heart. Yeah. So, just for once. Just for <laughs> you, once. Thank you. <laughs> you know, like, uh, I want to say thank you a lot. You know, like, God bless you because, like, I don't know, like, if you know what you you told me, like, what you've been telling me, you've been telling me to do and helping me to to get back on my feet. You know, it was hard for me to get back. You know, because as as a young player and you're starting to play and you just get injured and you know you you think like the world is against you. You know, so and for me, I was having uh, a big burden on my head, like, oh. I want to do this, I want to make it take care of my family and stuff, my mom and stuff, so, and uh, get injured, so, but you came in and uh, you helped me, like, you helped me as a person, even not not just um, the rehab, you know, the way you talked to me helped me to be strong and uh, to be a good person and to be a good player too, you know, like, now I can say, like, my knee is better because the rehabs and everything you, you taught me, like, it's that helps me. So, thank you, Mr. Jason. Thanks for uh, everything you have done for me and everything you've been doing for me. I really appreciate that. And uh, please don't stop calling me your son. Huh? <laughs> you will be king of Ghana one day. He's yes, gonna well. uh, I, I think that. <laughs> for me, I, I think that it's the relationship and I want him to succeed. We talk about his family back home and yeah. again, him coming from Accra and the hardships that he has had to go through as a young kid and as a young man is in a lot of ways I can't identify with. I don't even know what that feels like because we're so blessed to be here. And for every player that has hardships, like I, I learn. And I learn that it, it takes a certain man to kind of be where he's at. So how can I help him along the way of his goal of supporting his family, going back to his home one day, and then creating a life beyond football. You know, obviously football is, football is the ultimate goal right now, but there's also a realistic where football doesn't last forever. Yeah. And, and knowing that by the grace of God, if his career lasts a while and then he can do X, Y, Z, but you never know anything can happen at any moment. So if that were to happen, is he okay? If he plays for five more years, is he okay? For 10 more years is he okay and i always say like once you're like 
the king of Ghana, I'm gonna go visit you in your yeah. palace or <laughs> your apartment complex or whatever it is. But like, I, I think seeing his success now is great, but I'm, I'm an old man, I'm getting old. So I wanna see your success moving forward from there. So. Yeah, and, uh, and everybody out there, you trying to come to have fit. And uh, I can tell you one thing, it's like, here is his family, you know, friend, you know, you know, someone you can talk to, you know, share your pains with. And I know they're gonna help you the way they help me, you know, I know you get better. Just have, have the trust in them and they're gonna take care of you, yeah. Stay blessed and uh, help it will help you. Ha, 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 ha.